March 6th, St. Perpetua and St. Felicity The holy martyrs Perpetua and Felicity were among the most outstanding figures in the early centuries of Christianity. The act of martyrdom of Perpetua and Felicity was one of the widespread documents in the church during their time. They died in Carthage on March 7th of the year 203, along with three other companions, Revocatus, Saturninus, and Satyrus. The details of the martyrdom of the saints of the church in North Africa has come down to us through the actual account of Perpetua who recorded their imprisonment and tortures before their martyrdom. The sacrifice of their life for the faith is one of the most moving events of the glorious struggle of the martyrs of the ancient times. Septimus Severus, Roman emperor from the year 193 through 211, decreed the prohibition of the subjects of his empire under severe penalties against their conversion to Christianity. Because of the decree, five catechumens in Carthage were captured and taken to prison. They were Vibia Perpetua, a 22-year-old lady married and of noble birth, her slave Felicity, who was pregnant at the time, and fellow slaves of Felicity, Revocatus, Saturninus, and Secundulus. Satyrus, the one who introduced them to the Christian faith, accompanied them to prison. Perpetua's father was a pagan. Her mother and two of her brothers were Christians, one of which was still a catechumen. A third brother had died as a pagan when he was still a child. Upon their arrest and before being taken to prison, the five catechumens were baptized. The difficult life in prison, the attempts of Perpetua's father to induce his daughter to apostatize, the vicissitudes of the martyrs before their nearing execution, and the visions that Satyrus and Perpetua had were put in writing by Satyrus and Perpetua themselves. Shortly after their death, another Christian added the details of their execution to what Perpetua had written. The darkness and oppressive atmosphere in the prison, aggravated by the anxiety of having been separated from her recently born son, aroused fear in Perpetua. Two deacons managed to reach out to the prisoners and alleviate in some way their suffering. Also, the mother of Perpetua and her brother, who was still a catechumen, visited her. Her mother brought Perpetua's son, and she was allowed to keep her child in the prison with her. A few days after Perpetua's father heard about the rumor that the trial of the Christian prisoners would take place soon, he again visited his daughter Perpetua and begged her not to bring disgrace to his name. In spite of this, Perpetua remained strong in her faith. The following day, the trial of the six prisoners took place before the procreator. The six resolutely confessed their Christian faith. Perpetua's father, carrying Perpetua's child in his arms, tried for the last time to convince her to apostatize. The procreator also tried to persuade her, but he also failed. Perpetua refused to pay homage to the gods to protect the emperor. The procreator then took Perpetua's father away from her by force, and he was whipped and scourged. The Christian prisoners were condemned to be torn by the beast during the festival of the emperor's birthday. The Christian prisoners accepted this sentence and gave thanks to God. They were transferred to the prison camp. The jailer had learned to respect the Christian prisoners and allowed other Christians to visit them. They also allowed Perpetua's father to talk with them, but his attempt to convince them was never successful. Felicity, who at the time of her imprisonment was eight months pregnant, thought she would not suffer martyrdom with the others because of the law that prohibited the execution of pregnant women. Two days before the festival, however, she gave birth to a girl who was adopted by a Christian woman. On March 7th, the prisoners were taken to the amphitheater. At the request of the pagan crowd, they were scourged first. Then the men faced a boar, a bear, and a leopard, while the women faced a wild cow. Injured by the wild animals, they gave each other the kiss of peace, and then they were executed by sword. Their bodies buried at Carthage. Their feast day was solemnly commemorated even outside of Africa. The days of Felicitas and Perpetua were included in the Felician calendar, the calendar of the martyrs venerated publicly during the 4th century in Rome. Subsequently, a magnificent basilica was built over their grave, the Basilica Majorum. 
This was verified by the excavator Pete Delatare, who discovered an ancient inscription that includes the names of the martyrs. The diary of Perpetua includes many visions that she was granted as she awaited her martyrdom in prison. It was one of the early documents of the church, sometimes even used as homily material. One of the most highlighted quotes of the diary is, When I was still with my companions, writes Perpetua, my father, in his affection for me, was trying to turn me from my purpose by arguments and thus weaken my faith. Father, said I, do you see this vessel, water pot, or whatever it may be? Can it be called by any other name than what it is? No, he replied, so also I cannot call myself but any other name than what I am, a Christian. 